Hello everyone, I am Piyush Pailade. So this is the fifth lecture for our database management and warehousing uh, part for our GATE uh, DA exam. So in the previous lectures, we have discussed about introduction to a ER model and we have also solved few questions based on that, right? So you can watch lecture three and lecture four for the introduction to a ER model. Now in this lecture, we are going to discuss about how to convert this ER model, how to convert this ER diagram into relational model, right? So basically, we are trying to convert our AR diagram into relational model yes, with the tables and the columns name, right? It, it, it means like what are the different tables will be present in my database and what are the attributes will be present in that particular table, right? So that's what we are going to discuss in today's lecture. So let's start the session. Now, this is what we have discussed in the last lecture, like that is lecture number three, that is ER diagram symbols. So please go through it. Okay, I have discussed this in detail. Now this is about mapping constraint. Okay, this is very important part. Okay, if you want to understand the ER diagram, like conversion of ER diagram into relational schema, this is very important concept. Okay, so please go through it. I have I have already discussed this in the previous lecture. Okay. Now we have discussed about what is strong entity in the previous lecture, lecture number three. Okay. So here you can see student is a strong entity. So so strong entity is represented by a rectangle and you can see these are the attributes. So ellipse is used to represent the attributes and this underlines means it is a primary key or you can say key, right? What is different types of key we will discuss, but it is a key. So what is the function of key? So key is basically a unique value, right? So it must be unique plus not null. Not null means it should not have empty cell, right? So every student should have an enrollment number. And it must be unique, right? That's what is underlying indicates. So it is basically a key. Key is used to identify. So key is used to identify each row in a table. Okay. Because if we know the what is key, what is enrollment number here in the case of student, we can get all the information about particular student, right? By using enrollment number. So that's what the key is. It is used to identify each row in a particular table. Now, if you see this is a strong entity set represented by a rectangle and these are the attributes. Now, we want to convert this particular AR diagram into a table, right? So, what we do? So, this is what a relational schema is. So, here we represent the strong entity. It is a student table, okay? So, student is a basically a table. We have three columns, that is attribute, the enrollment number, name and contact number. And we represent like this in a particular table. So, this is basically a student table having enrollment number, name and contact number as a column name, okay? And we represent like this also in the relational model, we represent any relation. So basically this is a relation inside the curly braces, we represent the number of attributes. And if any attribute is having a primary key constraint or any key, so we underline it, right? So underline means it should be a, a unique and it should be a not null. So in this case, you can see enrollment number is a key. So here you can see 101 Rajkumar Mishra, 102 Sanat K. Roy. So enrollment number must be unique, right? So I cannot enter one more value having 101 or 102, right? It is not allowed. Database will give an error if we try to insert one more record having the same enrollment number, right? So enrollment number must be unique, right? So this must be unique because it is a key. And it should not be an empty set. Empty set, it should not be a not null, right? Right. So I cannot enter the record of a student without having enrollment number. Like I cannot enter Raj and say phone number 999. I cannot enter this particular record because Raj is not having an enrollment number. So underlying attribute. So underlying attribute is a key attribute. It should be unique and it should be not null. Okay. So, so please remember the question can be asked from this particular topic. Okay, so we are going to discuss key in detail in the further lectures. But as of now, just understood, it should be a unique and it should be a not null, right? And it is used to identify each row in a particular table. So this is how we represent ER diagram. And this is how we convert it into relational schema. So basically, this is a student, it's a table name. Here you can see a table name. It is also a table name. Here it's also a table name. And these are the attributes. Attributes means columns, right? So attributes means columns. So there are three attributes. So enrollment number name, contact number. And these three attributes are simple attributes, right? So we have discussed what are the different types of attributes also in the previous lecture. So please go through it first. So this is what 
the conversion of this particular ear diagram into a relational schema or you can see a relational table right now let's move on to a next slide that is strong entity with composite attribute now tell me which attribute is the composite attribute right so here you can see student is a basically an entity that is weak entity so here you can see student is basically entity that is strong entity represented by a rectangle enrollment number is underlined so this is basically a key attribute right this is basically a key attribute contact number is our simple attribute uh, indicated by ellipse now here you can see this is a composite attribute right this is my composite attribute composite attribute you can see we name can be stored as first name middle name and last name right if you are given this er diagram and if you want to convert this er diagram into a relational schema what we do so this, this is the general representation of er diagram here you can see like this also student is basically a entity or table and we are having the particular attributes enrollment number name and and composite attributes are represented like this in this particular thing right f name m name l name and then contact number but when we want to convert this er diagram into a relational table so here you can see we are storing enrollment number first name middle name last name and contact number we are not storing this particular attribute name because it is a composite attribute so we only store composite attribute that is f name m name and, mid and last name in a table right so suppose if you ask the question to convert this particular er diagram into relational schema remember that we never store this particular attribute name we only store this first name middle name and last name in the case of composite attribute right and this we can store like enrollment number and contact number so same representation is here also student is basically a table enrollment number is a key then f name middle name last name from composite attribute and here you can see contact number right so same constraint is applied to uh, enrollment number also it should be unique and not null right so i hope you understand this particular concept the only thing is that while storing the composite attribute we only store f name middle name and last name in this case right so we are not storing the root attribute of this particular composite attribute right so uh, please remember this point now let's move on to our next slide that is strong entity with composite attribute and multivariate attribute right so this is my key attribute this is my strong entity this is my multivariate attribute so this is my multivariate attribute indicated by a double ellipse and this is my composite key right we are discussing the uh, last slide it is my composite attribute so this er diagram is represent like this right so this is a student entity enrollment number this is basically a composite attribute and here you can see this multiple attribute is indicated by a curly braces like right? like this we are storing a multi-valued attribute here now if we want to convert this into a relational table so what we do we simply store student that is a table name so enrollment number that is a key attribute first name middle name last name from the composite attribute and the contact number but here you can see contact number is a multi attribute so here you can see a triple two comma slash comma then one more number say for example a particular student is having two phone phone number or contact number so in this case three contact numbers so we are storing in a particular cell only right like this so, so raj is having two contact numbers so we are storing contact number in a particular in one cell only here also sanat is having three contact number we are storing this in a particular cell right so, this, so that's how multivariate attribute is represent in a relational model or relational table but if you observe this suppose if i want to update the phone number of raj okay so how you will update this particular phone number how will you update this particular cell because there are two phone numbers in the same cell okay so how will you going to update this particular phone number or contact number right so it will be difficult or it is not possible to update any one of the contact number so how to do that right it will it will be difficult to update the contact number so for that what we can do we can add one more row here that is 101 raj kumar mishra so one contact number will be stored in this particular right and one more contact number we can store with one more rows right but in this case it will violate my enrollment number because enrollment number must be unique right so here if we add one more row to add one more contact number related field then it will violate my key constraint right so it will not allow 
like database will not allow us to input such record because it, sh it should be unique. Then what should we do in this case, right? Now here you can see like same thing what I have explained earlier. So enrollment number is the key, first name, last name, middle name and contact number is basically a multiple attribute. If we want to store and or contact number in two different rows. So what we have done here, we have make this contact number and enrollment number as a primary key. So this enrollment number, enrollment underscore number and this contact underscore number is a key here, right? Now this must be unique. So this must be unique plus not null because it is a key, right? And we generally call it as composite key. Composite key. Why composite key? Because it consists of more than one attribute. So what is composite key? Key consists of more than one attribute, right? That is basically a composite key. So here we can see enrollment number and a contact number is a composite key because if you see in the previous slide we cannot enter this one more record because enrollment number is a key so it must be unique. The moment we made this enrollment number and the contact number is the key so here you can see 101 and this particular thing this is unique 101 and this 777 it is unique so combination of enrollment number and contact number is unique in this case right. So that's why we can add such particular row. So if we keep doing this, our database will take more storage, right? So our database will take more storage or we can say there is repetition of this particular record, right? So there is redundant record in this case. So we are unnecessarily repeating these two entries, right? For this particular contact number. So what we can do, we can split this particular table in two table. You can decompose this particular table in two table. So that first one is student that is enrollment number, F name, middle name, last name and here we can add one more table that is contact such that enrollment number and contact number is here. So that is basically a composite primary key that is composite primary key. Here we are storing the data in two table that is first one is student table storing the student information and next one is the context table right now I can if I join this like so I can get the information of this particular Raj by using the enrollment number so there must be some common attribute between two tables so then I can get some information right if I know 101 so I can go for so I can go in this table I can see okay for 101 uh, this is the contact number for 101 this is the contact number right so we are going to discuss this in detail uh, don't worry about it but whenever there is multi-valued attribute please remember we need to add one more table okay in the in a relation in a relation for that particular attribute such that it should be a combination of that particular attribute with the key of the parents table so this is key of the parents table and that particular multiple attribute right so please remember this point it is very important concept they may ask you in the gate exam okay now this is strong entity with composite attribute, multiple attribute plus derived attribute. So this is my key attribute. This is my composite attribute. This is my multi-valued attribute and this is my derived attribute, right? Now this derived attribute is derived from this particular attribute that is date of birth, right? So we never store this derived attribute in a database. So what we can do? We can so instead of storing derived attribute as age, we always store this particular attribute at the state of birth, right? So here you can see student enrollment number, then this, then there is composite attribute, first name, middle name, last name, and here you can see date of birth. And here in the one more table, context for multi-valued attributes such that enrollment number and contact number. So that's what we have discussed. So remember two things: we never store derived attribute in a relational table or relational schema. Okay, and this is indicated by this particular function because age is, age is basically a function right which takes state of birth as an input right so i think that's it from this particular slide so so please remember we never store direct attribute in a particular table and for and when we have multi attribute then we always create one more table such that it will consist of a key of one table plus that multi attribute okay
I hope you understand how to convert this ER diagram into a relational table. Okay, so please go through it. Please watch the le lecture again if you didn't understand. Okay, so in the next session we will discuss about about the mapping cardinality. Suppose we have this two as an entity like this, and this is a relation, right? This is many to many, right? Many to many. Suppose this is student, and this is course, and this is say enroll, right? So, how to represent this particular ER diagram into a relational table? That's what we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Okay. So, please watch lecture number three. Okay. For this, uh, before watching this particular next lecture, because it is so it is necessary to understand the concept of this particular thing. Okay. Thank you.